desperate for hope that recovery from your eating disorder is possible? Do you feel afraid, ashamed, alone, or misunderstood? Or maybe you know someone struggling, but you don't know how to help. Friend, you are in the right place. Welcome to the Recover With God podcast, where you'll hear stories of recovery, personal and professional advice, and hope that only comes from God. You are not alone. You are understood. And God is here right now to walk this journey with you. Hello, hello to you. Yes, you listening now. I believe with my whole heart that God has you tuning in today for a reason. I'm Jamie, host of the Recover With God podcast, and this is the very first episode. Welcome. I am overjoyed, truly, and overwhelmed by everything God has done to make this podcast a reality, to make my recovery a reality, because it starts with my eating disorder recovery story, which is what I am about to share with you today, in addition to the story behind this podcast. But none of this is about me. It's about God, his power, his faithfulness, his grace, and his truth above the loudest lies of an eating disorder. And this podcast is for you. If you are struggling with an ED right now, or if you are feeling desperate to help a family member or friend recovering from an eating disorder, this is for you. Future episodes will include guests. Some, like me, have a recovery story to share. Some are professionals, dietitians, nutritionists, and coaches with additional wisdom and resources to help with recovery, body image issues, food freedom, and more. And I will ask every guest for tips on how to help someone who is struggling if that is why you're here. You do not want to miss this season. Every guest Every story will inspire and encourage you, whether you need help or want to help. I'm so glad you're here, and I pray that you will hear today or in this first season of the podcast something that you need. All right, before I dive into my story, I am going to answer the question that I will ask every guest on the podcast, and that is, what does living with zeal look like in your life right now? So zeal is one of my favorite words, and for me, living with zeal is living in passionate pursuit of a purpose. My purpose is to use my story and my experience to help others who are struggling or in need of hope. And not just with eating disorders. I am a recovering perfectionist, and I live with high-functioning anxiety, which is self-diagnosed, but I also believe God gave me the spiritual gift of encouragement. So that is what I'm doing here today. Pursuing my purpose right now means starting this podcast and trusting God with the outcome. Personally, I also choose to see every day as a gift and treat it like an adventure. So I pursue life. (laughs) Even trips to the grocery store can be adventurous with the right mindset. So that's my take on zeal, and you can expect to hear insightful answers to that question from all my guests this season. And now, I'll dive into my story. As I mentioned already, my name is Jamie Muller, and I live in Knoxville, Tennessee with my husband and our old English bulldog. But I grew up in Michigan, raised in a Christian home, and I accepted Jesus into my life when I was four years old. I want to set that foundation because God has been part of my life for as long as I can remember. And throughout my entire story, he has never left me. In fact, he's the reason I'm talking to you right now. This year, 2024, I will celebrate eight years of recovery from bulimia, recovery with God. But my eating disorder story didn't start with bulimia, and it didn't start with trusting God, that's for sure. It started with an innocent diet. Fast forward to age 15, and I wanted to lose a few pounds. Nothing major. I was at a healthy weight for my age, but I thought being slightly smaller would make me happier. My mom bought me a workout video, and I started paying attention to what I ate, like not going back for seconds at dinner or not snacking as much. At first, I didn't overexercise or drastically limit my food intake. But after I lost a few pounds, my perfectionism kicked in. Why stop at a few pounds when I could be perfect at losing weight? I knew I could do better. So 
I tried. After all, I was a goal-driven achiever, a 4.0 student. But underneath it all, I was very insecure about my abilities and what other people thought of me, so I kept striving even harder. What I want to emphasize is that my drive to achieve and be the best and appear perfect was powered in my own strength, not God's. So I relied on myself, my own abilities. My emotions and how I felt about myself were tied to how well I did on a test or how many compliments I received or how much attention I could get for doing something praiseworthy. Where was God in that? Well, he wasn't in it. I left God out and let the world tell me who I should be instead of God. And that is what I pursued. So I wanted to look smaller, more attractive. And I wanted this for several reasons. I was shy. (laughs) And I hated being shy so much that I thought maybe a smaller jean size would make me less shy, (laughs) less awkward, and more confident. Um, And I was a cheerleader. I certainly wanted to look good wearing that uniform with a short skirt that hid nothing. And I wanted to be popular. One of the cool kids. Oh, and I wanted guys to notice me. Sound relatable? (laughs) These reasons, each of them could have been fulfilled by God in some way. He's the ultimate source of confidence and security in who we are because he created us. His plan for our lives is so far above living a popular life or having a boyfriend in high school, but I didn't understand that as a 15-year-old. So I continued dieting. This was back in the 90s, the era of low-fat everything. With zero nutritional education, I decided to cut out as much fat as possible. And I cut the overall calories I ate to some magic weight loss number I must have read in a magazine because there was no Google or social media back then. Of course, my inner perfectionist thought, well, why stop there? Why not eat even less than that magic calorie number? Wouldn't that be a more perfect plan? So I ate less. Not surprisingly, I lost more weight. A lot. Very quickly. And my mom took me to a doctor. Yikes. I didn't want doctors involved. So I gained back a few pounds, just enough to stay away from the hospital and also stay skinny. Yet, instead of achieving confidence and popularity and what I thought would make me happy, I was a mess. On the outside, I was the A student, National Honor Society, a cheerleader. I worked so hard in my own strength to create a perfect facade. But inside, I spent the rest of my high school years obsessing over what I ate because I was terrified of gaining even one or two pounds I was terrified of not looking perfect. Daily weigh-ins, a strict diet and exercise routine, these were the things I planned my entire life around. I don't know if I was clinically anorexic because I wasn't diagnosed, but I had to be pretty close. After about a year of that extreme behavior, my food cravings were so intense that I binged. And then I felt so guilty that I spent the next few days severely restricting my calories and exercising for hours. But that wasn't the last time I binged. In college, my binging increased and I gained noticeable weight. From a purely physical standpoint, it might have looked like I was healthier, but I wasn't. Weight is not always an indication of an eating disorder. My food intake was... At both ends of the extreme, from barely eating anything some days to eating everything in sight the next day, I felt like I was fighting a war with my mind and my body. Every time I binged, I was furious with myself for not being perfect. My mind screamed at me, where is your willpower? Why can't you stick to your diet? It shouldn't be this hard. You're such a failure. Now, I'd like to point out a few things I didn't realize at the time. One, even though I wasn't throwing up food, I was struggling with bulimia. Instead of purging, my methods of compensation for a binge were to restrict and punish myself with hours of exercise. And two, I'd made food and my weight an idol. Yes, an idol. The Bible has a lot to say about idolatry. In fact, the first of the Ten Commandments tells us not to serve any other gods. 
Now, I grew up taking that literally, and I thought, well, I, I don't worship a golden statue or believe in Greek mythology. But here's the truth. Anything or anyone that comes before God in your life is an idol or another God. For me, the obsession with my weight and hiding my struggle from the world became my God. My senior year of college, I was engaged to be married just months after graduation. My soon-to-be husband had no idea. I was struggling beyond my occasional comments that I ate too much. He thought I was just being a girl. (laughs) I knew I had to fix myself before we got married and moved into a tiny apartment together. He would notice my binging and excessive exercise, and I couldn't have that. So a few months before the wedding, I, in my own strength, somehow forced myself to stop binging and restricting. Instead, I ate three meals a day and snacks and increased my daily calories above that magic dieting number. But once I stopped binging large amounts of food, I actually lost weight without even trying. By the time my wedding arrived, family and friends were commenting that I looked too skinny and needed to eat more. I ignored those comments for a few months, and honestly, I loved that I could be skinny and eat what I thought justified as a normal diet. But it was still a diet. I was careful to only eat what I thought was healthy and low calorie. One day, out of frustration, after hearing these comments, I thought, fine, I'll eat a bunch of junk food and say that I did and get people off my back. But guess what? That triggered more binges. One night, when my husband was working late, I ate so much I could barely move without feeling like I would puke. Prior to that, I swore I'd never intentionally throw up food. The thought of it disgusted me, and I knew it was wrong. But that night, throwing up seemed like the only option for relief, so I did. I threw up in the toilet. Just a little bit. Right away, I felt better, physically. And right away, the lies poured into my head. Oh, that wasn't so bad. If you throw up just a little every time you binge, you won't absorb as many calories. The devil is so quick to feed us lies when we are weak, and I chose to believe them over God's truth. The next time I binged, I threw up. Gradually, my binging went from one or two days a week to a few times per day. Yes, day. It felt like a drug addiction. All I could think about was my next binge. Once I binged, all I could think about was getting rid of all that food in my stomach as soon as possible. It was such a vicious cycle. I loved it, then I hated it, and it felt impossible to stop. After a few years, I couldn't even imagine my future without bulimia. And even though that terrified me, a part of me didn't want to let go of my eating disorder. That's how strong its hold was on me. Bulimia was my idol. Yet there I was, pretending to be a faithful Christian with a perfect life. At the time, I had a professional office job, 9 to 5, Monday through Friday. I didn't let it affect my work, but every grocery store trip did affect my finances, and hiding everything from my husband affected our marriage. While I won't go into all the details about our relationship, I want to note that both of us were struggling in different ways, and we didn't communicate. After eight years of marriage, the lies in my head eventually led me to divorce my husband. I met a guy in Florida. And I thought a whole new life, a clean slate, would finally help me recover. So I quit my job. I ran away from everything and everyone I knew in Michigan. In Florida, I also stopped going to church. My new boyfriend was an atheist. And truthfully, I was tired of striving to be the perfect Christian. Plus, the guilt and shame I carried around was heavy. How could I face God? It seemed so hypocritical. During this transition to Florida, I stopped binging and purging for about three months, but then I relapsed. Once again, I did it for the wrong reasons, a guy, (laughs) and I did it in my own strength, not God's. I even saw a Christian counselor for a few months after my mom begged me to, but it didn't help. Now, I'm, I'm not saying that a counselor can't help. But looking back, I realize now that I wasn't ready to fully let go of bulimia at that time. And when someone isn't ready, it can't be forced. I also remember thinking, this counselor doesn't know what I'm going through. She's never struggled with an eating disorder. Why should I trust her? So I didn't. And I stopped seeing her. 
but God was still with me. Months later, I was in the car with my atheist boyfriend, and we drove past a random church. In that moment, he looked at me and said the last words I ever expected to come out of his mouth. He said, I know you used to go to church in Michigan. If the reason you're not going now is because you don't want to go by yourself, I would go with you. I don't believe that stuff, but I would go with you. I was shook. It felt like a kick in the pants, and I knew it was God trying to get my attention. That's what God does. He is desperate and persistent in his pursuit of us. You better believe I found a church that very next Sunday, and it happened to be one that the Christian counselor recommended before I stopped seeing her. But my bulimia didn't stop because I went back to church or let God back into my life. I was binging and purging two to three times per day at that time, and recovery seemed impossible because I'd failed so many times. And if God could somehow help me recover, I didn't trust that he would be enough to fill the void in my life. Yes, the void, because bulimia was such a part of me that I was afraid to let it go because I didn't know who I was without it. I mean, I'd certainly forgotten the person God created me to be, or maybe I never knew who I was in the first place. Thankfully, I reached a breaking point in early 2016. I was exhausted physically, mentally, spiritually. As much as living without bulimia terrified me, the thought of living with it for the rest of my life suddenly terrified me more. So I cried out to God, something like, Lord, I can't live like this. I know I have to trust you with my fears, my insecurities, the cravings, all of it. So I'm letting go and trusting your way. I have no idea what to expect, but it has to lead to a better life than this. Shortly after that prayer, God led me to a book called The Bulimia Help Method, and I I linked it in the show notes. Well, it's not a Christian book. It was written by a husband and wife who had done extensive research and plenty of trial and error to find a recovery solution for the wife's bulimia. And get this, she struggled with bulimia for 10 years. And as I was reading this book, I had been struggling with bulimia for 10 years. For the first time, I felt understood. But more than that, I believed recovery was possible. From this book, I learned several things. One, What I thought was a lack of willpower was actually my body's response to not being fed enough. If I stopped restricting calories and trusted my body, my body would, in turn, trust me and not send signals for me to eat everything in sight. Two, it wasn't an all or nothing process. My perfectionism wanted me to believe that I had to quit cold turkey or I was a failure, but that was such a lie. I had to take it one day at a time and give myself grace along the way. And three, binge cravings wouldn't kill me. I had to allow myself to feel each craving, to sit with it and get used to it. And when I say cravings, I don't mean for a piece of chocolate or dessert after dinner. Those things are normal. What I mean is the addictive type of craving that literally gave me withdrawals like a drug. So I stopped binging and purging one day a week. Then two and so on, till I went a full week, then a full month. At the end of that month, I rewarded myself by going skydiving for the first time. That was May 2016. Now, I will admit, the idea of skydiving freaked me out, but I also knew I had to do it in spite of my fear because it seemed like something I would love. And I was right, jumping out of the plane, that free fall felt like freedom. As I stretched out my arms, I knew 15,000 feet above the earth that I could never go back to bulimia again, and I didn't. This time, recovery was different. I truly let go of my desires and let God take control. I trusted him even when I desperately wanted to binge, or I had a bad body image day, or I was afraid to eat things like peanut butter and egg yolks and chocolate without throwing it up. And with trust comes action. So about a week after skydiving, I broke up with my boyfriend. And I moved out on my own. That summer, I joined a small group at my church. And that fall, I signed up for a one-on-one discipleship program with a woman from my church. God gave me my life back. And I wanted to give my life back to him. 
for three years. I lived alone and I focused on my relationship with God and my relationship with my body and food. In that time, I truly learned the meaning of grace. Better yet, I felt the power of grace in my life. After years of doing things my way, in my strength, and striving to be perfect, God forgave me and welcomed me back with open arms, no strings attached. In all my years of being a Christian and knowing the definition of God's grace, I have to say I didn't truly understand until I experienced it so unconditionally in my own life. And God didn't just forgive me. He gave me more, more than I deserve, more than I ever thought possible. He led me to Knoxville and gave me a second chance at marriage. And before that, during my single years, God taught me how to live again. He gave me the means to travel, and I discovered I loved solo travel. Well, it was me and God traveling together. Uh, But in a three-year span, I took seven solo international trips, visiting 14 countries, just me and God. And I learned a lot about myself on those trips. Travel also helped me embrace freedom with food. I was so excited to eat the local delicacies and dessert after dinner, and I enjoyed every bite. But it was a gradual process with food. After I stopped binging and purging, I had to relearn how to eat again, just like I had to relearn how to live. My eating disorder robbed me of so many years of life, and I wanted true freedom. So over time, I, I let go of fear foods. I let go of always being in control of what I ate. And I let go of my fear of gaining weight. It certainly was not overnight. In fact, it took years. But today, I can walk into a dressing room, try on whatever size fits me, and be okay with that number. And speaking of numbers, I haven't owned a scale since 2017, so I don't even know how much I weigh. Not because I'm afraid to know, but because it doesn't matter. Do I still have bad body image days? Yes, (laughs) I am human. Do lies about food, calories, and exercise still pop into my head? Yes. The devil won't quit once he knows your weakness. The difference is I recognize the lies. So I can press pause in my mind and speak truth over myself instead. And when I talk about truth, when I was in my early stages of recovery, there were times when I told myself the truth even when I didn't believe it because I knew eventually I would. So that is advice I would give to you now is to just speak truth over yourself even if you don't believe it because your mind needs to hear it and you'll eventually start to. And I know people recover from eating disorders without God. It is possible and I believe they are truly recovered. However, for me and my story, I needed God to recover. He wasn't waiting for me to figure it out and then welcome me back to him. No, God was waiting for me to welcome him into my mess and then recover with him. And that is a premise behind this podcast. I know my story is only one of so many out there. Two years ago, I had a thought. Let's call it a God thought because I believe God planted it. My thought was this. Could I start a podcast to share recovery stories and give more women and men the same hope I needed? That thought both thrilled and scared me. (laughs) Maybe someday, I thought. And I went on to do other things, like self-publishing an eating disorder recovery devotional, which is also titled Recover with God. I linked that in the show notes as well. It's on Amazon or Barnes & Noble. But God didn't forget about this podcast idea. It was his idea, after all. Back in September 2023, I attended a Christian women's retreat with authors, podcasters, and women in ministry. I left that retreat with the conviction to give God my yes to start a podcast. And here I am. It's been a journey. Starting a podcast is quite the learning experience. But God has been faithful because it's not about me. It's about him, and it's for you listening right now. And God promises his faithfulness to you too, whether you're struggling with your own eating disorder or you care about someone who is struggling today. Go to God. Let him be your strength. Now, before I end this episode, I want to remind you to read the show notes for all the links to resources that I talked about and 
I'll go over some of them again. So I'm linking my eating disorder recovery devotional available on Amazon or barnesandnoble.com. I'm linking my Instagram accounts where um, I have one that I share my daily life stuff, which is adventure and the girl, and my other, which is hope in the girl, where I share a lot of hope and encouragement. Um, I'll also share a link to my blog with lots of personal stories about my travels and my faith. And lastly, I'll share a specific blog post that I wrote on what to say and what not to say to someone with an eating disorder. That post is my by far my most popular post on the blog in terms of search volume, which tells me that it's a topic that a lot of people are interested in, need help with. And so I hope that helps you if you need it. So find all of that in the show notes. And I hope you say hello on Instagram too. Please know I am praying for you. I may not know who you are or what you need, but God does. And I hope you trust him. Hey friends, I hope this conversation encouraged you today. And if it did, please let me know by rating and reviewing the Recover With God podcast wherever you are listening. Your feedback helps others find this podcast too. And click that follow button so you don't miss new episodes airing every Wednesday this season. Be sure to check out the show notes for all the links and additional resources we talked about today. And don't forget, whether you need help or you want to help, all help comes from God.